Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at Or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this meeting. Thank you because to you we have come. And we are looking unto you for revival. We are looking to you, O oh God, for a visitation. We are asking that you will help us. We are asking that you will move with us. We are asking that this night, each one of us, Something serious will begin with us. Something eternal will start with us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I said, we thank God for the way He has brought us to Himself tonight and in the course of this meeting. I'm trusting that as the meeting grows, the Lord himself will continue to grow with us. His presence will continue to increase in our midst in Jesus' name. If you look at our theme, our theme for this year is Vessels for Revival. That is men, women that God can use to bring revival. Men that God can lay his hands upon to effect revival, to bring about a manifestation of his power and to turn our land aright and to release the glory of God in the midst of men. Men that God has, I mean, can use to bring about the release of his wisdom. Because we have come to understand that whenever God wants to walk anywhere, whenever God wants to manifest himself anywhere, he doesn't manifest himself on trees. God does not manifest himself on mere programs. God uses men. The power of God only flows through men. The grace of God only becomes manifest in the lives of men. And so in the course of this meeting, we are going to be focusing first on our lives. And we are saying, God, whatever you can do to use me, do it. Whatever you can do to turn my life around, do it. And we are believing that he will do that. I want you to make up your mind as we go on. That you did not come to meet a man. You have come to meet the Lord. You have come to encounter Jesus. And you have come that he might show you the secret of his power. You have come that something tangible may start with you. There are various analogies about this meeting that God may be leading us into as we go on. But tonight I want us just to look at something very brief, something very short, something very familiar, something that we cannot neglect and as we look at it together we are going to begin this meeting from that point 
and we are going to be praying from that point trusting God to help us trusting the spirit of God to minister to us I want us to open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah Isaiah chapter 59 Isaiah 59 chapter 59. If we have time, I would have wanted us to read the whole chapter. There are only 21 verses there. But time is not possible for us now. As a result of that, we are going to be reading as it is necessary. We are going to read and see what God will have us say. After that, we will go ahead to pray. I want you to look at verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, and then we will go on to verse 10, verse 11, verse 12. Now, behold! The Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot say, neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear, but your iniquities are separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity your lips have spoken lies your tongue have muttered perverseness none calls for justice nor any pleads for truth they trust in vanity and speak lies they conceal mischief and bring forth iniquity they hatch cockroaches' eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dies, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. The act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil. And we are going to look at verse 1 again. The first important word in, verse, in that verse says, Behold. Behold. What's the meaning of behold? You see, when God wants to get your attention, He tries to show you something. And I see God is about to show us something tonight. God is about to show us a secret. God is about to show us something that makes many things to happen in the lives of men. What causes many, many troubles? What causes many, many problems? What causes a lot of people to go up and down looking for solution and they will not get? But you see, the first thing is for God to say, Behold! Let me show you this. Let the hand of the Lord is not short. Nobody has cut it short. Nobody can cut it short. The hand of the Lord is long enough to reach anybody. 
The hand of the Lord is long enough to make and meet every need. There's nothing too difficult for the hand of the Lord. There is no where a man is that when God wants to help him, that his hand will not touch him. There is no height that God will have to be doing like this, doing like this, before he can touch. The hand of God can reach any height. The hand of God can reach any depth. The hand of God can stretch anywhere. And so God said, let me show you this. My hand is not short. My hand is not short. Don't think that, oh, I have been trying to reach you, but I cannot reach you because my hand is not long enough. My hand is long enough to reach you, to meet your need, to solve your problems. And to turn things around for you. My hand is long enough. My hand is not short. And it's not shortened. Nobody can shorten it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, Behold, look at this secret. considering and the ear of the Lord is not heavy the Lord is not dull of hearing the Lord's ear is not blocked God said look at this look at this my hand is long enough for you my ears is sharp enough to hear you. Everything you are saying, I hear it. Every, every breath of your heart, I hear it. Every sigh you sigh, it reaches me. Everything you whisper, I hear it that you could not even say for anybody to hear, I hear it. It is not that you need to shout for me to hear. It is not that you need to run around before I can hear. You don't need a loudspeaker for me to hear you. My ears are not heavy to hear. This is the Lord speaking. He said, Behold, look at this secret. Look at something that I must show you. Let me show you where the trouble is. Some of you are thinking, My hand is short. My hand is not short. Some of you are saying, The hand of God has not yet reached us. That's why my problem has not been solved. God says, stop thinking like that. Stop thinking like that. Because my hand is not short. And it cannot be shortened. It can reach you. If I stretch my hand now. If I stretch my hand now. It will meet your need. It will encounter your situation. How deep is your problem? Are you deep down, 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 down there? I don't need a ladder to come down. My hand will reach you. Even if you are at the bottom of the bottomless pit. If I wanted to carry you, your problem is not a problem. My hand will bring you up. This is God showing you a secret. 
see this God revealing something to us. And we need to understand it tonight. Before we go forward, before we can pray well, before we can receive miracles, before we can touch the power of God, we must see what God is showing us. You must not close your eyes to what God is showing to us. God said, Behold, look at this. Open your eyes and see something. That's what God is saying here. Some of you are thinking, Maybe God is so busy. He's hearing so many things. So he couldn't hear my own. Maybe I need to shout a little more. God said, no. My ears are good. They are correct. They are sharp. Very, very, very sensitive. Whenever any man says something, I hear it. Even if you just drop something like this, I will hear it. If anything is moving around you, I hear it. Even when somebody is doing kele, kele, kele like this, that nobody hear the footsteps, I hear it. If it is the devil that is coming quietly near you, and he starts to walk in a way that nobody will hear his footsteps, my ears are so sharp that I hear it. Even when things are happening secretly, what you cannot hear, I hear it. So my problem is not hearing. I don't have problem with hearing. God said, I have no problem with hearing prayers. I have no problem hearing people. I have no problem hearing the cries of men. I have no problem hearing the cries of my people. When they call, I hear them. When they talk, I hear. When they whisper, I hear. When they breathe, I hear. When they sigh, I hear. But there is a secret that is turning things around that is causing confusion and God said look at this do you want to look at it eh? I want you to answer if you want us to continue you want to see what God wants to show you listen listen some people don't like to see they are sick, they are secret. If you want to open it, they say it's better not to hear, to see. Let me not see it, so that my mind will not be disturbed. Sometimes I don't want to hear that message, because it will disturb my conscience. I don't want that kind of message. But God said, I must show you. And what did God say? Behold. You know there are times when somebody wants to show you something. He said, brother, please look at this. If you are a person that doesn't have a sharp eye, what do you do? You open your wallet and bring out your goggle and say please let me put on my glasses so I can see very well so he will adjust his goggle so, oh yeah, so let me read where are you showing me is it this one this one okay and is it like that may God help you tonight you may need to adjust your second eye. You may need.
to concentrate so seriously so that you see what God wants to show you tonight. Don't look wuna, wuna, wuna like that. Oh. Look carefully. Because it is God that says, Behold. Behold. Now, what is he asking us to look at? And I want to say again before I go on. God is not a gossip. God doesn't talk about another person to another person. God will not show you what doesn't concern you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? God is not interested in talking about another person to you. If he say behold, he's talking about what you need to see about your situation. Something you need to see very clearly. Something you need to see for yourself. Don't allow someone to see it for you. If anyone should see it for you, you will not have seen for yourself. Some people go to some prophets. Make you see vision for me. Please see vision for me, for me. So that I will know what God is seeing for me. And the prophet will turn one side like this. And he will shake his head like this and he will try to sneeze he will just sneeze and then he will shake like this he say mm, I see something I see something I see something and then you will be shivering like this and say Baba what did you see Baba what did you see I will not be afraid tell me and then the prophet said, Ah, yay! God, don't let me show her. God, don't let me show her. It's not something you should see. Then you will need that again, Baba, please now. Baba, please now. But God is not asking a prophet to see a vision for you. God himself is asking you, Come. Behold, look at this. Look at this secret. Look at this matter. Look at this situation. This is where the trouble is. As we go on tonight, I pray you will adjust your goggles. Adjust your eyes. Adjust your eyes. And say, God, I want to see. I want to see. What is the matter I need to see? About my life. About my family. About my business. About my church. About everything I'm doing. I want to see. Lord, open it. Open it. Don't be afraid to show me. Whatever you let me see, I will take a step about it. Hallelujah. What is God saying you should see tonight? God is saying, your trouble is not beyond my hand. Because my hand is not sharp. Have you thought that your problem is beyond the hand of God? Baba said no. There's nowhere you are that my hand can't reach you. And do you know what will happen in this meeting? God's hand will reach you. Even if you have already got sunk into the... In, 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 uh -huh, Baba will lift you up. 
his hand will reach you where you are. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Do you remember when they carried Brother Paul and Silas? They took him into the prison. They did not put him at the outer prison. They put him in what they call the maximum prison. The one inside. You will open many doors before you can reach them. And so many chains were put. A lot of guards were there. And where they made them to lie down, they tied their legs. So that they cannot move anywhere. And there were four strong soldiers standing by their sides. Who decided not to sleep? That this man, they are terrible, we must not allow them. And the centurion and the, the prison keeper was so strong. He said, I've kept them under maximum security. And what did Brother Paul do? And silence at 12 midnight. The Bible said they prayed and they sang praise. And as they sang praise, the hand of the Lord that went through all the chains, all through the doors, all through the security, Baba's hand just went there straight and broke all the chains. All the doors were opened. Everybody was released. I want to say to you tonight, there's no way anybody has imprisoned you. There's no way the devil has kept you. There is no confederacy that has been called to, to lock you up, to lock up your progress. There is no kind of court where they are sitting together to discuss your progress. When God decided to stretch forth his hand, he will just pick you out of their midst just like that. The hand of the Lord will just come from above. He will just pick you. And your enemies will be watching. And they say, what is happening? Who is moving this man from our hands? They say there is a stronger hand than all our hands. The hand of the Almighty is not short. Did you hear what I'm talking about? Baba's hand is never short. There's no weird I am that Baba's hand will not reach me Anywhere Baba's hand will just pick you up. And it's a strong hand that can save. A strong hand that can deliver. A strong hand that when it releases, nobody can tie you down again. But what is the problem? If Baba's hand is not short, if there's no where you are that Baba's hand cannot reach you, so what is the secret? Baba said, Behold, look at this, but your iniquity. Tonight, I don't want you to stand from this meeting without looking at what God is showing you tonight. I don't want you to say that's how they preach. This is not a sermon. This is Baba saying, Behold. If you don't want to behold it now, any other time you come, Baba will say, Behold. 
If you think you are too big to look at it now, he will still come and show you. Except you don't want to come out of your troubles. He said, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hidden Baba's face from you that he will not hear. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you with me? Are you listening to me? Baba said, there is something that sin can do. There is something that sin can make to happen. And if you don't know the secret power of sin, you may not know how to handle it. And if we don't deal with the power of sin, we are not going very far. Whatever we do will not last. Whatever prayer anybody prays for you is mere noise. What is the power of sin? What is the secret power of sin? What is the effectiveness of sin? Look at the Bible talking about something. A lot of people are playing with sin. They say, say, even if I commit it, when I go to church, maybe it's a matter to confess. It's because you don't know what sin does. You don't know the extent to which sin can deal with a man. And I'm going to spend some little time tonight to show you the power of sin. Because God said, Behold! God is saying, Look at this! After all your singing, after all your running up and down, look at this! There is something that is causing confusion. There is something that is making your life difficult. There is something that has opened the door for the devil. And there's no need to keep quiet. Baba said, look at this. Don't keep making efforts. Look at this. Look at this one. Stop going up and down. Stop going from one house of prayer to another house of prayer. That is not your problem. Oh. That's not your problem. Oh. That's not where the problem is. Oh. Baba said, look at this. Stop looking at other things. Your iniquities have separated between you and me. Your sins have hid my face from you. Oh, what, what am I talking about? See, it's like, it's like a blindfolding. Please hold this one. Whenever somebody is committing sin, you may think that a small sin. It's not like that, oh. Every time a man goes to see, sin releases a blanket and comes straight, straight, and block the bad act. So that whatever is happening to you, Baba will never see you again. Even if the devil is killing you, Baba that will have delivered you will not see it. You say, God, don't you see my problem? Don't you see my problem? Baba I 
I cannot see any problem. I can't see anything. I can't see any problem. I can't see you. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you you calling me? I cannot see you. I'm not seeing you. He said, don't you see how the devil is pinching me? Don't you see how people are scattered in my life? Baba said, I cannot see. Something has blinded my eyes. Your sin didn't allow me to see you again. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? My brother. My brother. My sister. Let me tell you something. You may think when you come to church, Baba sees you. No, not when you are a sinner. Not when you are living in sin. Not when you are committing sin. Not when you are deceiving people. Not when you are doing something secretly. Even if you come like this and say, Oh, no way, Mary. Baba say, Where are you? I cannot see you. I can't see you. Say, Look, look at what the devil is doing to my leg. Your leg? Where is your leg? I can't see it. Listen carefully. Are you listening to me? The Bible told us about Jesus that he saw the multitude and he had compassion of them. The compassion of the Lord came when he saw them. But you know the trouble. Compassion of the Lord cannot come to you. Because he cannot see you. What will make him not to see? Eh? Eh? You see? Now wait. Wait. Some people say it. What sin? What is sin? What is he talking about? I've never killed anybody. The little, little sin here they commit will not cause God not to see me. Can I tell you again? Hold this for me, brother. No matter how small a sin is, any time that sin is beginning to come to a man's life, it will continue to produce something like this. Small, 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 and as you commit sin, that's why it will be tiny. Best in your mind, tiny. Your mind, tiny. Your mind, what the devil can never do to God. Sin will do it. He will tie it hard. You see, and Baba cannot see. Excuse me, brother. Baba said, You have been going everywhere. You have been doing many things, oh, but you have not looked at this matter. Somebody has prayed to you before, but you've never sat down to consider this, oh. You have taken it light. Look at Baba. Look at Baba. Oh. Look at verse 7. Maybe I should better be reading it from verse 6. No, let's start from verse 3. Your hands are defined with blood. The blood of young babies that were aborted. He says, your fingers 
with iniquity. I kept wondering, how can somebody's fingers, what do we use fingers to do? <laughs> young brother, young brother, what do you use your fingers to do? In the secret, when nobody is around, between you and that sister. What did you use your finger to do? He said, it's not a sinner. It's only my finger. is only on the finger. It is capable of blinding Baba's eyes from seeing your trouble. Even if your sin is just that you put one finger in it. There are people that put their head, their leg, their body inside sin. But even a finger will create the same results. He says, Your lips are spoken lies. Ah, you mean ordinary lies? To exaggerate a matter, we blind Baba's eyes from seeing my trouble. I am not the one who said it, to Baba said. Your lips are spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. There's no time. Let's go quickly to verse 7. Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. You say, that's not my own problem. But look at the next line. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. What do you think about? What's going on, gra 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 in your mind? They are thoughts. They are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their path. I want to stop there. I want to illustrate what I'm saying with two stories. As soon as I finish those two stories, I hope you will see what Baba is showing you. If you see what Baba is showing you tonight, and we decide to deal with it, God is going to have mercy on us. And I'm telling you, it's a matter that if we see tonight, Something good will happen to us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There are two stories in the Bible. The first story is the story of Balaam and Balak. I don't know whether you remember the man called Balaam in the Bible. If you have remembered, let me see your hand up. That's good. I'm happy about that. So I won't have to waste time on that. Now, the story of Balaam came up in Numbers chapter 22. It continued to chapter 24. Up to chapter 25. 
I will quickly tell the story so that we can go on. Now, in chapter 22, from verse 1, the Bible told us how the children of Israel got ready to pass through the land of Moab. You know, God was taking them from Egypt to the land of Canaan. And he has been helping them. Anywhere they went, God was fighting for them. Anywhere they went, God was supporting them. Anywhere they went, Baba was winning their battles. So, Balak was the king of Moab as at that time. And the children of Israel are going to pass through Moab. So Balak started being afraid. Say, hey, those people are coming. Do you know what he said? He called all the chiefs. Say, please come, oh, there's trouble. The children of Israel are coming. Everywhere they went. They destroyed the place. There's nothing you can do against them. Mighty kings have tried to fight them. Mighty nations have tried to confront them. But these people, they don't even shoot a gun. We don't know how they fight their battles. Once they come now, you will just discover that your people will be dying. We, who will deliver us from the hand of Israelites? Wherever they go, they will just lick the whole place. What? They will just eat everything and finish it. So they began to make suggestions in their council meeting. What shall we do? 